This is my take on the ESP boy. In this video, I will show you how I turned a basic prototype into a sleek battery powered all-in-one mini game console. The one you are looking at was manufactured and assembled by PCBWay. I have also shared the full project details on the PCBWay community page. You can check it out there and even place an order directly from the page. I will leave a link in the description. Oh, and by the way, PCBWay is celebrating its 11th anniversary with some awesome deals. They are giving out coupons for PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, and CNC orders, plus discounts on selected items from their online store. There's even a lottery where you could win some cool gadgets. So don't miss your chance. Be hurry, the celebration ends on July 18th. I'm also planning to set up a GitHub repository soon, so stay tuned if you are interested in digging deeper or contributing. Alright, let's get started. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Making game consoles is always fun for electronics hobbyists. The original circuit was made open by the ESP Boy community, so it's easy for anyone to build. I started out by ordering a PCB based on the published design, soldering the components myself, and assembling the whole thing. Of course, it worked, but I felt that the component layout could be a bit cleaner. So I thought since I'm doing this for fun anyway, why not add a few personal touches? One thing I really wanted was to be able to charge the battery via USB instead of replacing it every time. Also, it would be great if the system could automatically switch between USB power and battery power without needing a physical switch. Join power from USB when connected and falling back to the battery when unplugged. Lastly, instead of using multiple separate modules, I wanted to integrate all the features into a single PCB to make the whole system as compact and neat as possible. To implement the features I mentioned earlier, each of them requires its own dedicated circuit. In this section, we'll take a closer look at each of these circuits. A USB connector is essential. It's used for both supplying power and uploading programs. 5.1 kilo ohm pull down resistors are connected to the CC pins to allow the host to detect the device and enable 5 volt power on VBUS. Next up is the CH340C, a widely used USB to UART bridge chip. The D5 and D6 LEDs aren't strictly necessary but they serve as a fun way to visually confirm RX and TX activity during uploads. Since the CH330C has a built-in crystal oscillator, the surrounding circuitry can remain quite simple. Just be sure to double-check the TX and RX connections. CH340C's TX should go to the microcontroller's RX and vice versa. This is a common place where mistakes happen. Auto flash circuits often use a combination of two discrete transistors and several resistors. But in this design, we achieve the same functionality using just a single UMH3N, dramatically saving board space. The UMH3N integrates two transistors along with built-in base and base emitter resistors, reducing the need for external components. In this design, instead of using a D1 Mini, I choose to use a ESP Room 02. Although it's still based on the same ESP8266 core, so compatibility isn't an issue. I need to pay attention to the pin assignments and double check the wiring accordingly. As you can see here, I've labeled each pin with its commonly used function as well to make the layout easier to read at a glance. Next is the power supply section. When using USB, 5V is drawn from the USB connector to power the circuit. To protect the connected PC from potential damage, I added the diode D3. This diode prevents reverse current flow back into the USB power line. 
Additionally, a resettable fuse is included. If the current exceeds a certain threshold, the fuse will temporarily shut off the circuit to prevent damage. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted the system to automatically switch between USB power and battery power. And that's exactly what the circuit does. It's a commonly used design found on many boards, and it turned out to be the simplest and most efficient solution, requiring just a few components. The charging circuit uses the TP5400. I've covered this chip and the charging circuit in previous video, so please refer to that if you'd like more details. This is a DC-DC converter circuit that steps down 5V to 3.3V for the ESP8266. Here I use the NCP1117, a common and widely used linear voltage regulator. Of course, you can use other voltage regulators without any issues. It might not be the most efficient choice currently available, but it works sufficiently well for this application. Next, these are the circuits for controlling the RGB LED and the sound. We use the two transistors inside of the UMH3N separately to control the LED and the audio output signal. Next to it is an audio amplifier circuit using the FM8002A, which is also employed in the DF Player Mini. This circuit amplifies the input analog signal and drives a speaker. The gain of the amplifier can be adjusted by changing the values of resistors R23 and R24. In this circuit, both are set to 20 kilo ohm but the volume seems a bit low. Slightly increasing R24 might improve the volume. The overall circuit configuration closely follows the recommended design from the datasheet. When a high signal is received from DAC out, transistor Q5 turns on and pulls the shutdown pin low, setting the FM8002A into operational mode. When DAC out is low, Q5 is off, and its emitter collector path is open. In this state, the shutdown pin is pulled up by resistor R25, which keeps the amplifier disabled. This reduces current consumption to around 4.2 microamps, contributing to power savings. Although DAC out is technically an analog signal, I realized after the design was completed that it's not ideal to use it directly as a digital input for Q5. However, in practice, the signal usually stays near its minimum or maximum values, effectively low or high, except for brief transitions. As a result, the circuit still functions reliably in this application. Next is the I.O. expander circuit. The ESP boy uses 10 buttons, plus controls for the display, audio, RGB lighting, and more, so the available GPIO pins are somehow limited. To expand the number of GPIOs, we use MCP23017. A key feature of the MCP23017 is that it communicates via the I2C interface. This allows the MCU to control many more GPIO pins using just two I2C lines the SCL pin and the SDA pin. By using these two pins, you can increase the number of GPIOs by 16. The DA converter used in this circuit is the MCP4725A0T. It is a 12-bit digital to analog converter with built-in EEP ROM memory. The input interface is I2C, and the output is an analog voltage. The DAC output is used to control the brightness of the display by connecting to the BL pin of the LED module. Additionally, as mentioned earlier, it is also used to control the shutdown pin of the FM8002A audio amplifier, effectively acting as a switch to toggle the amplifier between operational and shutdown modes. Once the circuit schematic was ready, I moved to designing the PCB layout. 
To begin with, I choose a horizontal form factor to accommodate the largest component, the 18650 battery holder. The ESP room 02 was placed at the center of the board, with its antenna extending past the edge of the PCB to improve wireless performance. Directly below the module, I positioned the display so that it sits approximately in the center of the board. The speaker is mounted on the front side, while the battery holder is placed on the back to save space on the front side of the PCB. For the controls, the directional buttons are arranged on the left side, and the ACT and ESC buttons are placed on the right. I put the RGB LED at the center of the directional button cluster. It can be quite bright during operation, but it's not a big issue. The speaker on-off switch and the main power switch are also located on the back side, keeping the front layout clean and uncluttered. I also placed the two extra buttons labeled left and right on the back, reserved for special operations, I guess. Although they are not used at the moment, they could be useful depending on the application. Last time I tried PCBWay's assembly service and was amazed at how it turned out. I decided to use PCBWay's PCB assembly service again for this project. Don't get me wrong, I love doing the soldering work myself. However, let's face it, soldering can be time consuming and error prone. When the components get smaller and the number of parts increases, it becomes harder to handle and easier to make mistakes. It's a, such a huge advantage that one important step in your project is done by professionals. A few weeks later, the assembled boards landed in my mailbox. Look at it, how beautiful is that? As expected, all the components I specified have been neatly soldered. It's fantastic that everything works right out of the box and it saves me so much time from soldering and unnecessary debugging. Just like other regular ESP32 or ESP8266 boards, you can directly upload programs to ESP Boy using the Arduino IDE. For ESP Boy, you can create or install games using the ESP Boy Little Game Engine. Today, I will show you an even easier way. Upload games from a web browser. Yes, you can install games directly from a website, just like using an app store in your browser. All you have to do is visit this site, pick a game or app you like, click install and select the serial port. That's it. The app gets flashed straight to your ESP Boy. Super convenient, right? In my design, actually, there is one small issue. The audio is a little too quiet. After checking the FM8002 datasheet, I found that increasing the value of R24 could boost the output volume. So I tried replacing the resistor using a hot air gun. However, I accidentally melted part of the plastic housing on the variable resistor during the process. In the end, I realized that both the variable resistor and the R17 weren't actually needed. Now R17 has been replaced with a 0 ohm resistor, and U10, the variable resistor, has also been shorted with the wire. As a result, it sounds better now. Well, I guess that's all for today's video. In today's video, I shared why and how I made my own ESP Boy. It was a really fun project and a great way to learn something new. Everything works as planned except for a small issue with the audio volume. I was able to install the games from the web app store without any trouble, and they ran smoothly on my design board. Of course, I'm still a terrible player. But hey, that's not the ESP boy's fault. 
Now I'm pretty happy with how this project turned out, and I've still got a lot left to explore. What do you think of my version of ESP Boy? If you are into making your own mini game consoles or just enjoy hobby electronics and PCB design, make sure to subscribe for more content like this. And if you have any ideas or requests for future videos, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.